let's learn about NBT data. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding an item that is going to save NBT data on it. Now, NBT data is an idea that is similar to the block state properties, but this time for items. So one thing to basically sort of say in the beginning is that NBT data is actually saved on item stacks and not items. Now, the first question is, what is the difference between item stacks and items? Well, it's the same difference to block states and our item stacks. So that's the general idea is that if you have an item, so let's say, for example, you have two diamond swords in your inventory. And of course, if you take the first one, you roam around and you kill a bunch of monsters with it. Then, of course, the durability of the first iron or diamond sword is going to decrease and the second one isn't. So they're both a diamond sword, right? They're both of the item diamond sword. However, they are different item stacks. That's the general idea. Every stack you have in your inventory is a new item stack. That's all that you really need to know. Basically, the thing we're going to do is when we right click with the dousing rod, instead of just outputting it, we're also going to save it on a new item stack. For that, we're going to go into our custom package, right click new Java class called the data tablet item. And this will extend the item class right here. And then we're going to hover over this create constructor matching super. And then I will actually copy over the rest of the methods. Now, this is actually not too crazy. And of course, I will explain all of the methods and what they are doing. Right. So let's start at the very top the use method. So what we have is we have three different methods for our NBT tag. So they're called tags. And when we have this get item in hand, you can see this returns an item stack. And the first method that we can use here is the has tag method. This simply checks, as you can see, returns true if the item stack has an NBT tag component or compound rather currently used to store enchantments. Well, in our case, we're actually storing something else on there. And that is actually pretty cool. Now, what then happens is that if the actual item stack does have a tag here, then we're actually sending it to a new one. This is in this case, an empty one, because what we want to do is once it has some data on it, we can basically right click and delete the data off of it. And that is basically what the use method here does. The is foil simply returns has tag. This simply means that if the actual stack does have this tag added to it, then it's going to have the, you know, the enchantment glittering basically. And then the append hover text method is really interesting because what this is going to do is this is going to show a particular tooltip only if we have the tag actually available for us. So if this data tablet item stack has some data on it, then we're going to display exactly that data. You can see we have a string current or the way tags save data is just like a map. So we're basically always having a certain key and that always maps to a certain value. The keys are of course unique in this case. This is why it is very much best case scenario or it's a good convention to add your mod ID dot and then whatever you want the key to be named because the mod ID is always going to be something that should be at least unique in a mod pack, for example. And then you just are going to be very sure that this is going to work. And you can see then we're going to basically get the string that is behind the, so the value of the string that is behind this key. And then we're just going to add that to the actual tool tips in the append hover text. Now let's actually create this item. So in the mod items class, we're just going to copy over the magic dust. And this is going to be the data underscore tablet. There you go. And then of course, a name here as well, data underscore tablet. And this is now of course, a data tablet item. There you go. Now, very important that we want this to call the stacks to one here, because in this case, if you save NBT data on an item stack and on an item, basically, you always want it to only stack to one. Otherwise, there's some weirdness with the data because you can basically split the stack and then basically you have two item stacks with the same NBT data and then you can't stack them again because the NBT data does match up. It's all sorts of weird, so highly recommend always making sure that this is the case. Right, and now on to saving the data onto it. Now for this, what we're going to do is we are going to actually, first of all, make a util class, and that is going to be in the util package. I'm going to copy this over. All of the code is, of course, available to you in the description below, GitHub repository and individual gist as well. 
Now, long term, I'm actually not 100% sure that we need either of those methods because there are some other methods that are available in the inventory as well. However, I just found them to be very useful. The idea is that we have a static method that basically checks whether or not a player has a certain item in its inventory. Then there's also a method that gets the first index of an item inside of a player's inventory. That's pretty much all that they do. Nothing too crazy. And we're going to basically use those in the dousing rod item. Because what we're going to have is we're going to have two things. So number one is we're just going to have a method that actually adds the NBT data to it. This is also something I will copy over, but of course explain in hopefully good enough detail. So you can see, first of all, we're going to get the data tablet item stack. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to get the inventory and then we're going to get the item at the first inventory slot where this actually is available. Whether or not the item is inside of the inventory, we're going to check in just a moment in the on use method or use on method. And then once we have this data tablet item, the item stack here, then we're going to create a new compound tag. In this case, this is our NBT data. Then we're going to put a string into it. So this is saving some data into this NBT tag with this key and then this value. You can see we're pretty much just pasting in or putting in the same value that we are outputting right here. So pretty much the same string right here is then now being added to this tag. And then the last method that is very important is the set tag method you can see. And this basically just sets the tag of this particular item stack to this particular compound tag. And that's pretty much all that there's to it for saving data on on item stacks or you know saving nbt data on item stacks now what we're going to do is inside of here after we found this to be true what we're going to say is we're going to say if the inventory util dot has player stack in inventory we're going to pass in first of all the player and then mod items dot data tablet dot get and then if that is the case we're just going to call add nbt to data tablet and then we're going to say player we're going to say the position clicked dot below not offset, but below by I, and then block below. So pretty much exactly what we're doing right here in the output coordinates. And that is pretty much all that we need to do. Of course, for the actual item, we still need to add the translation as well as the texture and the item model. But that is, of course, all very straightforward. So let's add the translation first, because that is, of course, something that I don't want to forget right here. So we're just going to copy this over as well. Nothing too crazy. Same with the item model. It is just going to be a normal item model JSON file. There you go. It just points to a item texture. Let's copy that one over as well. So this is going to be the data tablet right here. There you go. And that is pretty much all that we need to do to, well, get this data tablet in here and save some NBT data on it. So I guess let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft. And as you can see, the data tablet has been successfully added to the game. Let's just see when I search for valuables. There you go. And now if we hover over this, you can see found Minecraft copper or at the specific location where it was found. And if I right click here, then you can see the actual data has been deleted. And if I have two of them, so that's very important because we're always searching for the first index where this is at, basically with the inventory utils, we're never going to basically take the second data tablet, we're always going to override this. So this is right now 38, 98, 10. And then if I look at this one, now it's 37, 98, 11. So that's very important that this actually does override the um, actual data found on this one and doesn't use this one. But this is, of course, something that you could, for example, add. It actually should not be that hard to do. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much how uh, an example of NBT data might look like. Right, but that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated. And special golden thanks go out to MC Arctic for actually supporting me with the gold block tier. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.